Welcome back to your soon-to-be favorite podcast. I'm Angelica. And I'm Kelsey. And this is Here We Grow. besties hello um we are back sorry we took another week off but we are back we are staying as consistent as we can um we are we have a fun episode ahead of us we're gonna do friends trivia which you may have recognized from the title if you're not a friends fan get out so sorry get out (laughs) i mean there's a lot of other stuff that's that's gonna be in this episode so if you're not a friends fan stay until the trivia starts i guess if you're not a friends fan go watch it go watch friends or stop right here go watch friends and then come back fuck our podcast or you know what you could just watch like a friends blooper reel yeah on that's on youtube and those are hilarious you don't have to know what's going on right um but yeah so we're gonna do friends trivia and that is obviously because matthew perry died rest in peace we are attributing to him and i'm also going to tell the story of my little sister ava which i've only mentioned on the pod a couple times um and we've got a little bit of icebreaker with uh two let's get deep cards that angelica is going to read let's jump into it that's the first question i was um deciphering whether or not like this one goes first or this one i think because they're kind of similar okay first question what had the biggest impact on your self-esteem growing up? Ooh. Where did it all, where did it all go wrong? Starting hot. That's a good one. Yeah, where did it all go wrong? Mm. I mean, granted, I can't, I don't think I can pinpoint the biggest impact. Yeah. But I can think, think of moments. Moments, yeah. Yeah. I can, moments. I can think of one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so i have not been skinny like quote unquote skinny since i was like i don't know seven Mm -hmm. maybe same so i've always been a little chonkier Mm -hmm. and i remember i was probably like god like eight maybe or even nine Mm ten this is when like you know i started growing a little bit and like growing on you know whatever and i remember i went closer to puberty yeah getting closer to puberty maybe i was older then i don't know between eight to twelve at fuck it i I'm terrible, obviously, as you can tell, to recollect things like that. But anyways, <laughs> I, I was I was a child. Okay, I was underage. <laughs> and we went to my we went to a birthday party on my dad's side of the family. And my dad's side of the family, I'm when I was a kid, I wasn't as close with them. So I only saw them like once a year, maybe. Yeah. And I remember, I don't remember which cousin it was, but one cousin came up to me, like an older cousin, and they're like, Wow, Angelica, you've gotten so big. Meaning tall wise. Yeah. Older. Yeah. You know, and and they like you know raise their arm up to show like height, uh-huh. and my dad goes, yeah, she's also getting wider too, and <laughs> Mr. Figueroa, <laughs> we have some issues. You know what? I brought it up to him, like you know, when I got yeah. older as an adult. <laughs> he didn't say that. He just said, "This I don't is remember that, bro. This is every fucking parent's." claim yeah i don't remember it didn't happen that yeah. way quit trying no. to gaslight me no i know Bruh. it's a core fucking memory obviously. it really is a core memory and i remember being so embarrassed i went inside the house and i didn't want to like go back out yeah i can't think hmm. what had the biggest impact on your self-esteem growing up i never i mean i was same story as you like i have not been quote-unquote skinny since i was a very young child and so i've only been i've always been bigger um i feel like i had the worst self-esteem in middle school because and i'll always tell people this middle school is just a different breed of like people's eyes on you Mm -hmm. than elementary or high school yeah in elementary school we're too young to be thinking about each other yeah and then we get to middle school and everybody's eyes are on you at all times everybody's judging you making comments about you yada 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 that's so true and then when you get to high school, it's kind of like people don't care about you anymore. Yeah, they're, they're all doing about their themselves. own thing. Right. Right. 
And so like my worst self-esteem, I say, I would say was in middle school. And of course my worst self-esteem was in middle school. It's like when you're learning about yourself and what you like and how you want to dress and how you should dress. And, yeah. You know, and that's when you're learning about like popular and not popular. And I think that like just societally and like how school kind of just naturally goes is probably what contributed to that. And I gotta be honest, I don't remember a whole lot about my childhood. But I do remember, like, just being one of the big girls in the class. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At least starting in middle school. Um, and not that I'm saying this is, like, traumatizing or anything. But we grew up in a very diverse school system. IPS school system, which is public school. Which is majority minorities. Mm hmm and not very many white people. So I'm usually the only white person in the class, or at least the only white girl in a class. And I think that has attributed to how cultured I am now, mm -hmm. how much I understand other cultures. But back then it was kind of like I was the odd one out. And it felt that way. And at least in middle school when it was just really immature. Yeah. But... I remember something else. In middle school is like when people start getting boyfriends and shit. Yeah. That shit was crazy. <laughs> Thinking about your sister. <laughs> it's not. No. <laughs> I remember I was always a kid that I would love singing. Like I would literally put a CD on, grab the remote and pretend like I'm giving a show. Yeah. And I annoyed my mom so she much. She like, shut up. She would tell me to shut up. Yeah. And then I remember I was in middle school or high school. I did a recital with my choir and Stephanie said, oh my God, you did amazing. Except yeah. your face looked like you were taking a shit. Oh. And when she told me that, I didn't. I never wanted to be back on stage. Like I was oh like, gosh. okay, I'm not meant for this life. Oh, that sucks. And I told I her remember. about it too. Same thing. She claims she doesn't remember. I remember. <laughs> what the fuck, Steph? <laughs> Stephanie, if you're listening right now. Um... I remember your mom telling you to stop singing. And I, I would Why would be, she do that? I would be at your house and I'd be like, no, Angelica, keep singing. <laughs> because I liked your voice. And I didn't hear it seven days a week. Which yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> okay, let's let's twist it a little bit. Okay. What had the biggest impact on your self-esteem growing up, but in a positive way? Oh. Like what really boosted your self-esteem? I think... Do you have one? I have to think about it. Me too. Let, give, just give me a second. Yeah, let's let's think about it. Something that affected your self esteem in a positive way. Okay, I have one. Okay, it's kind of a mixture of things. Yeah, but one thing that comes to my mind right away is that like my aunt, Aunt Tracy, she was in my life a lot as a kid, and I remember her really treating treating me like a grown up, like a woman. Like, teaching me how to be a woman. Uh -huh. And I feel like that boosted my self-esteem alone. That she felt like... How do I word this? I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. Just her, like, ushering me into womanhood felt, built my self-esteem. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, like, other women that I may have known in my life that were more like my body type, that were really awesome people that I've met, like, that would be really nice and kind to other people, but also funny. And I'm like, I thought to myself, like, I want to be like her. Like, she may look like me, which is, like, not the societal standard, but she's a really cool person to be around and she makes me feel good when I'm in her presence. So it's like, I want to make people feel that way. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have one? No, <laughs> you asked the question <laughs> if you don't know. Well, I don't know. This might sound a little vain, but I was going to say... I mean, Compared but it, to mine. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just in general, like, when I lost weight my junior and senior year, and I got pretty privileged, or skinny privilege, mm -hmm. and people started treating me differently. Mm -hmm. And, like, I picked up on that. I was, I mean, I was fucked up, but, like, I picked up on it. Yeah. And I remember, this is, <laughs> can I tell you something creepy that happened to me? <laughs> sure. Okay. And for all the people who listen to it. My us. God, if you went to Broderpool, there were some fucking creeps. Okay. Okay. 
I remember. I know one right off the top of my head right now. Yeah, I'm. It's that guy. Okay. Oh, it's that guy and another okay. guy. Okay. Okay, this is fucked up. Do you okay. Want to give initials. I don't know his last name. I don't remember. Hang on, hear me out. Okay. So like when okay, I would have been a junior mm-hmm. when I had lost this weight. So these kids were out of high school. Yeah. And but you know you you still hang out with people out of high school. I mean right. whatever. So I was hanging around people that were still in high school and people that were out of high school. Oh, this is going to sound really fucking creepy. Okay. Call it out. Cut this out, Kelsey. It was... Okay. And... Yep. Huh? Yeah. There. They were in a car. Okay, so back to... You can cut this back in. Okay. These two creepy guys... I'm going to because I'm going to forget it. Go ahead. These two creepy guys were in their car... And they wanted me to get in the car with them. And I was like, no, th- I was at the park, Broderpool Park. Yeah. And it was like at six at night. I stayed after school and I was like, uh, no, thank you. And they're like, wow, like you lost all this weight. Your boobs look really good. Like just get in the car with us. And I'm like, oh, no man. fucking thank you. If, if, if you and thank Bro- you. <laughs> if you went to Broad, if you went to Broderpool and you were in my class and you want to know who those people were, fucking message creeps. me and I'll tell you. I would have been like 16. These yeah. kids were like 18. Yeah. And I was like, mm, first of all, I did not lose weight and for you. Kidnapper vibes. Like pulling Literally up to kidnapper me. vibes. They were telling me to get in the car with How them. How do you not know that that's creepy as fuck? Well, because they were fucking creepy. They're still fucking creepy they're as still fuck. They're still creepy yeah, to this day. Yeah. Very. Bleh. But anyway. Yeah. I remember I felt good about myself losing weight, but then that happened and I was like, mm, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look away. <laughs> but yes, pretty privileged, skinny privilege. Damn. I listened to a podcast about it recently. I remember I had friends tell me like, oh, you're like skinny now. So you think you're, and I'm like, there's no, even, there's even um, like midweight privilege because oh. there are people who are like really, really overweight, like pat, like societally standard over overweight and then there are people who are like just like chunky uh-huh. and even those chunky people have privilege over the people who are like ob like considered obese i guess it's just hard because like <sighs> there's so much stigma mm-hmm. between having weight and i and i say that intentionally having weight mm-hmm. right like someone's not fat they have fat yeah and you can find me on this all you want like yeah I because guess. if they lose fat then they lost weight, right? Yeah. They didn't lose being fat. They right. lost weight. But anyways, um, it's I think it's stigmatized that someone who is overweight or has a lot of weight on them is typically an unhealthy person, an mm-hmm. unhappy person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something with their job, something with their love life. You know what I mean? Like there's always yeah. something. Yeah. And so you always Something's typically gotta see. Something's got to be wrong with yes, them. Yes, exactly. Something's got to be wrong with them. Mm-hmm. And so people think it's okay to treat them differently, treat yes. them less than. Right. They are subpar. And I guess similar to someone who is, um, how do I phrase this? Who does not have fat. Okay. <laughs> someone who's extremely underweight. Uh-huh. You know, they also get treated differently. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next question? Okay, what's the one moment that changed your life? And again, oh. you can't say being a mom. Oh. What's one moment that's changed? Oh. Unless you do. I mean, I guess if you want to talk about that. Okay, I got one. Okay, what's up? When I figured out that I have ADHD. And I'll tell you why. If you haven't listened to my ADHD episode, please go back and listen to it because it's not just about having ADHD. It's not just about excuses for your behavior. It's about so much more. It's about having, <laughs> it's about having compassion for yourself and understanding yourself better. But that's the big reason because I've learned, I learned to understand myself better and things just made sense. And I learned recently on a podcast about ADHD that women usually don't get diagnosed until they become a mom. Mm. Like they, they've had it, but it gets worse to the point where they're seeking some kind of like reasoning after they have children. It like gets worse after they have children. Yeah, I can imagine. It gets harder to mask. It gets harder to compensate for after you have children. Mm-hmm. And that's when I figured it out. I figured it out when Cash was like six months old 
And me and my husband sat in, like, after putting him down for a nap, we sat in the room. We were just talking. And I don't remember how I brought it up or, like, what made me think I should look up the symptoms. But I looked it up. And I have every single symptom of inattentive ADHD. And from that moment forward, I just consumed so much information about it and really self-inflected about like what parts of that affects my daily life and put pieces together that's like, oh, this is why I'm this way. This is why I do this. And once I figured that out, those barriers, I could figure out how to circumvent them and help myself without having to go and get medicated, which you should totally do if you need to. But I think I have, it's a spectrum because I have the milder side of it. I'm able to compensate for it. But for some people really struggle to function on it with ADHD. I said on it, like it's a drug <laughs> with ADHD. But that's the part, that's the moment that changed my life other than having my child was figuring out that I have ADHD because I can't imagine the shame that I would live with right now if I didn't know that my brain is different for a reason. Like my brain works a certain way on purpose. What about you? Mine was going to be a silly one, but <laughs> I just did it again. It just went really deep. It's called Let's Get Deep. I know, but like... Okay, go ahead. Okay, well... <laughs> hang on. I can move. Okay. Let me think about it a little bit then. <laughs> okay. I thought I had a good one, but I don't think I do. Um... Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I'll just say the one I was gonna say. Okay, just say. Okay, because you're not gonna be able to think of it now. I know. Like I'm, all I'm not. Okay. Okay. So like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. I used to go to a school, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? I mean, I guess all school people. <laughs> Okay, I used to go to the specific school. Okay. And I, I thought that Not like... Not the one we've already named. <laughs> no, another one. Okay. Elementary school. Okay. So I was in this elementary school from the time I was like in first grade. And it was going to end at like, I think sixth grade. And like, I kind of had an idea of like, who I was going to go to middle school with, who I was going to go to high school with. Like, the same people, right? The kids uh -huh. you grow up with in your elementary, you typically like, yeah, follow each other onto the schools or whatever. I got moved out of that school and I got sent to a different school in fifth grade. So when this happened, I, and you know, back then we didn't have phones. It was all landlines. Mm -hmm. So I, we didn't have social media. I lost communication with majority of my friends. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, were, were mad at me. Basically rumors started. Okay. There was a rumor that I'd gotten pregnant and that's why I had to change schools um, there was like girls who I wasn't friends with created rumors to the people I was friends with saying that I like talk shit about them. This girl tried to fight me at the park. I was in fifth grade and That's I had lot. no idea that my mom switching me schools would cause this much chaos. Right. And I didn't find out until I went to high school with some of the people I went to elementary with and they told me all this. Wow. Because I had no idea why friends were mad at me. I had no yeah. idea why, like, they you stopped taking contact. my calls. Yeah. Like, yeah. Someone said I got fucking pregnant. What? Fifth grade? In the fifth grade. Like, what the fuck? But anyways, I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> that changed your life forever. It changed my life forever. Well, but it was good, though, because I went to a different school, and I met a lot of other people. Yeah. And then, Yeah. See, it wasn't as, like, serious as yours. Yeah, but it also wasn't, like, silly. Like, I thought you were going to say oh, something. I thought like... it was silly. I, I guess it was, that, that was, like, the, the biggest life change. Well, as a kid, it felt yeah. so huge to me. Like, right. you like, took how me are you away. Get through this? Yeah, you took me yeah. away from all my friends. Like, yeah. now I got to deal with these other people. Like, I got to yeah. start over. Like, yeah. The new Can elementary you imagine the kids, kids that like change schools like every year. Oh my! I can't even imagine. Oh my god! Yeah. Poor, poor, poor dudes. <laughs> poor dudes. <laughs> poor, poor, poor dudes. <laughs> poor little dudes. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Was that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So next. Oh, we should do a quarter of the week. 
I forgot about that. We went over this outline like three times in a row <laughs> and did not say quote of the week. It's okay. It's been a minute. All right. Yeah, I always feel like topsy turvy when we get <laughs> tipsy turvy. Topsy turvy when Dipsy-turvy. we get to record after a week of not recording. Um. Okay. I wrote in here on my weekly quote sheet, instead of doing a weekly quote one week, we could read each other's last search history. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Instead of doing a quote of the week, let's read each other's last search history. And I've searched some things since you've been here that you already know about, so I'm going to go past that. Like read read each other's out loud? Yeah. Wait, like you're going to read mine or I read mine out loud? Um, I guess we could just read each other, like our own. Our own, own. Yeah. okay. You, do you have yours? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 okay. Could you, could you mistake blood for your period pregnancy? <laughs> <laughs> what? I know I didn't type that. I must have hit <coughs> on something. But basically, I was trying to figure out if you, how do people mistake their period oh like, if they're pregnant if they're pregnant and then they think oh i got my period yeah but they're still they're actually but they pregnant. actually are pregnant yeah, yeah. like the show um pregnant i never know it was- or whatever <laughs> <laughs> pregnant and didn't know it i never knew i was pregnant <laughs> i think it's called <laughs> i didn't know i was pregnant no yeah i didn't know i was pregnant no yeah I, I was it? pregnant and didn't know <laughs> I just said pregnant and didn't know it. Oh. <laughs> I have another one. Okay, go ahead. Do lumps on breast hurt? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm telling you my boobs have been hurting. Oh my god. Let's, okay. Hang on, I think I got one more funny one. Okay, go ahead. Um, let me do the one. What's <laughs> chastity belt? <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh my god, Dr. Tavo, I looked up the hours because I need to go pick up my contacts. <laughs> okay, okay, so here's some of mine. Involuntary involuntary sniffling after crying and calming down. Oh, for Cash? Because Cash was crying and he was doing the, the stutter breath. <laughs> he was doing it so hard, he was scaring me. So Aww, if I looked it up. Well, he's little. I know, I, and I when I looked it up, it was totally normal and it's just because his diaphragm is working over time. When he when he cries too hard, yeah. Um, what kid. attraction? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a Google search. That's why it was something I clicked on. My next one is Mount Olympus, oh. and that just came up at work today. So I googled to see where it was. It's in Greece. What hills the Hollywood sign on, <laughs> which also <laughs> came up at work, which is called Mount Lee, oh. which is very underwhelming. Yeah, very under. Can we go back and forth? Yeah, go ahead. Interior lip meaning? Interior? And and terrier. And terrier? Occurs when the top of the cervix swells, but the rest of the cervix has completely dilated. Yes, women experience this during birth. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, invasive, invasive species ladybug. <laughs> Kelsey, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. All yours are medical. I Google everything. I know. Inflatable bed. <laughs> Air mattress, you mean? Yes. <laughs> I've forgotten the word for it. It's not like the fun. <laughs> remember when you were like, what's the sound? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> And then, pew, pew, like pew, when pew. a DJ is playing, and I was like, I don't know, I can't figure it out. And so I Googled, <laughs> wait, I probably have pew, the pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Wait, uh, let's see, Monday. Uh, what was it? Damn, I Google a lot of things. What is pew 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 DJ sound called? <laughs> <laughs> it's an air horn, if you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know. If you didn't know. But the reason I was looking up ladybug is because there's a different, like when you see ladybugs, if they're orange, they're not traditional ladybugs. They're Asian <gasps> um, 
An one. Asian, an Asian, <laughs> an orange one landed on me the other day. Yeah, it's not a traditional lady, ladybug. It's actually an invasive species called Asian something beetle. Asian lady beagle, beetle maybe beagle, beagle. <laughs> and I had an orange one today. What country does Harry Potter take place? <laughs> Ooh, what is it? In London, oh. London, England. Which I thought it would. I I don't know. Somebody made me think it was Scottish, but it's not. The Walking Dead zombies evolving. <laughs> <laughs> this was when I was talking to my neighbor earlier. We were talking about French people. Not well, French, like our classes. Uh -huh. I put French kids show bod kid with dog. <laughs> it's Tintin if you don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Amazon driver asking for password. What? <laughs> so at work we had an Amazon delivery and there's two of us in the building that are in the building that can order from our business account. That's me and the president Ryan. And there's one other, our like IT guy can order from Amazon. But we get an Amazon delivery and the pharmacist, his name's Aaron, he goes to answer the door and the Amazon driver, he's like, I had this package. It's for so-and-so. I'm just going to say so-and-so because it's our owner's name. And I don't want to put his name out there. He's like, uh, our owner, which is not the president, someone, what you know, higher up. He's like, I need the one-time password or the last two digits of his phone number. And I didn't see this interaction. Aaron came up to the lunchroom and he was telling me this. And I was like, that sounds like a scam. Like, it sounds like you're asking for our Amazon password. But you but are you're the Amazon driver. Yeah. And I said, and he's asking for the last two digits of a phone number. That kind of sounds like you're fishing for information that's on our Amazon account. Also, our owner doesn't order from our Amazon business account, as far as I know. He would order from his own account, and he lives in Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I told him to, like, turn the guy away because, like, I have no idea. That's and, crazy. It was a physical person, though. Like, yeah. And he was in the Amazon truck. So, when so maybe once, it was legit then. Well, once he told me it was an Amazon truck, I was like, okay, let me Google this. So I Google it, and Ryan wasn't there to like confirm or deny what was going on. That's why he came and asked me about it. I Google it, and Amazon says, yes, some for some packages, we'll have to ask for a one-time password. So they like give you a password, like a mm -hmm. code, to give to the driver to prove that they're delivering it to the right person. Well, why didn't the owner send you guys an email or something saying, hey, I agree. I communication agree. is fucking key, guys. I agree. I agree. My so God. then I only have two and a half minutes to finish the story. <laughs> so we have to take a break. So I then I text Ryan. I'm on lunch while this is happening. So then after I see that that screenshot, Aaron's already turned away the Amazon driver. I text Ryan. I said, Were you were you expecting a package today? He said, No. I said, There's an Amazon driver here with a package. He says he needs a one time passcode. And then I send him the screenshot of Amazon saying it because I felt like he wouldn't believe it either. Yeah. And then he goes, that's weird. I've never heard of that before. And I was like, D were you expecting a pa package today? He said, I ordered a phone, but it won't be there till Thursday. And so then I'm thinking, okay, what kind of phone though? Like, is it like an iPhone or like a, like a dashboard phone. phone, a desk phone? Because that's a big like money difference. And it's probably for a higher do dollar item. Yeah. But I didn't ask that. I said, um, I told him more about the password thing, needing a one-time password and that whoever ordered something would have it. And then Aaron told me that it was for the owner. It said his name. And I was like, oh, did is there something for so-and-so that's coming today? And he goes, oh, yeah, that's right. He ordered a laptop. I'm like, wow. They were going to tell the people who work here who are going to be receiving the package wow. that there's going to be a laptop coming? Yeah. Also, you should have an email that says you need to give your driver this one-time password. Or we need to know the last two digits of his phone number. Wow. <laughs> So I'm like, what how did thought? you just not remember that? <laughs> yeah. That's why I Googled Amazon. That's where the story came from. <laughs> oh, I was like trying to figure out why we're talking <laughs> where about did we? How did we get to this? So did the Amazon driver come back? Oh, yeah. Aaron told him, um, I'm, I'm not sure what's, what the answer is to your question, but he's not here right now. Can you come back? He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll swing back in an hour. And he did. Oh. He came back in an hour. And by then we had the one-time password, which he had to get from. Hmm. I just said his name. So and so, <laughs> the owner. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. All right, guys, it's time for the story of Ava. 
Yes. So I may have mentioned her on the podcast before. So I have a younger sister who's Kendra. She listens to the podcast. Shout out, Kendra. Shout out. She is three years younger than me. <clears throat> and then I have a much younger sister who is 19 years younger than me. Wow. She's 10. I'm 29. And 16 years younger than Kendra, if you didn't want to do the math for that. That is crazy, though. Mm -hmm. Like, when she's, you know, 20, you're 39. She's 10, and she's Cash's aunt. Yeah. And Sophia and JJ's aunt. Crazy. She is Travis's sister-in-law. Yeah. That just blows my mind. Yeah. So, anyway. I was going to say, and then when you have kids. Yeah, no. Yeah. You already have <laughs> You already have a kid. But, but when he has. When he has his kids. He'll be a very, she'll be a very young great aunt. Yes. And yeah. and she might even have kids around the time he does. Yeah, that's true. Like, he'll be on his second or whatever. Or yeah. she'll be on her, her, her second. Her second, yeah. Maybe, and then, yeah. Yeah, because they're only 10 years apart. Well, nine years apart. Almost eight years apart. <laughs> anyway, so here's the story. All about how? No. Wait. <laughs> how old is Kendra's oldest? Sophia is... <sighs> Kendra's going to kill me for not knowing this off the top of my head. Seven? I think she is seven. And See, she's even closer to Ava's age. She's three, but, she, but he'll be four in February. They will be having kids around the same time if yeah. they choose to have kids. Yeah, closer to Ava's age. Or, eight, yeah, they're closer to Ava's age than... Cash. cash yeah okay so when i was 18 i was trying to figure out how to be an adult and working and going to school at iupy for once two semesters and kendra was in her junior year of high school when we found out my mom was pregnant how did you find out my mom told us. I don't remember the exact moment. Like, did she sit you oh, guys no, down? Oh, no, I do. I do remember the exact moment. She called us into their bedroom one night. Like, after school, after work or whatever. We were at home. We maybe have already had dinner. You guys had dinner and she held it in? I, I think. I don't know. Or maybe we were going to have dinner soon. I don't know. Yeah. I remember it being dark outside. And I yeah. remember standing in her bedroom. But you know what? Now that I think about it, she's always had blackout curtains. So maybe it wasn't dark outside. It just seemed like it was dark because yeah, her room was dark. But she called us into her bedroom. They were sitting on the bed and she told us she was pregnant. I don't remember how she told us. She just like verbally said it. It wasn't like a surprise, I don't think. Or maybe it was. <laughs> maybe she got us a gift and it was like a pacifier or something. Damn, I should have asked her about this before. You don't remember? I really don't. That whole time frame was a blur. Okay. Um, and I was 18. That was, that was 10 years ago. Over over 10 years ago. Yeah. So she tells us, and I'm like, <gasps> I'm like shocked beyond my core, but excited as fuck. Do you believe it initially? Yes. I believe it right away. Because I'm like, she wouldn't tell us that if it wasn't true. She wouldn't be playing a joke on us. Yeah. My dad, maybe. Yeah. But not my mom. And my mom's the one who's like telling us that she's pregnant. So your initial reaction was excited. I was excited. I was like, damn, like, that's crazy that she's pregnant. And like, how did this happen? You know? <laughs> well, when. <laughs> when mommies and daddies love each other. Yeah. Um, and Kendra burst into tears. I remember you telling me that. But happy tears. Oh. She's always wanted a little sister. And so when my mom told her this, even though she was 16, she was like, ah! and what's funny is when I told Kendra I was pregnant, she also burst into tears. Really? Yeah. I'm going to tell her I'm pregnant and I'm pregnant. <laughs> I want that reaction. Yeah. Um, actually, here's a little quick little story of how I told Kendra I was pregnant because it's a good story. Um, we were on our way to tell Travis's mom <clears throat> and I FaceTimed Kendra. And she was like doing something in the kitchen and the kids were coming in the kitchen and they were being loud and getting into shit. And she was like yelling at her kids. And I'm like on the other side of FaceTime, like holding this piece of information, <laughs> waiting for her to get done yelling at the kids to get out of the kitchen. I'm like, Kendra, I have something to tell you. <laughs> come back to the phone. She's like walked away from the phone. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, Kendra, come back over here. I have nothing to tell you. I'm like, hold on, hold on. She gets the kids out of the kitchen. She comes back to the phone and I said, did you still want to be an aunt? And she goes, you're pregnant. And I said, yeah. She goes, oh my God, I'm going to cry. And she's already crying. Just instantly crying? Instantly, yes. Wow. And then I made fun of her because she cried when my mom told her. 
And she's like one of the only reactions I didn't get on camera, which I wish I would have. I wish I would have like screen recorded it at least. Or you could have got in person. Yeah. But you know what I, I wanted... just couldn't wait to tell her. Yeah. And she's told me over the phone before too. Oh, okay. That, that's fair. Yeah. I think both times she told me over the phone. I really like when people do photos like with the grandparents or parents like all right say cheese yeah cheese all right say kelsey's pregnant mm. and they'll repeat it kelsey's pregnant and then they're like, they're like wait what, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah so then we're like wow this is crazy and at the time my aunt was pregnant was about <gasps> to have aaron oh yeah and that's my, oh my dad's God. sister that's my dad's sister okay so how old were these women my aunt was 40 when she had Aaron and my mom was 37 when she got pregnant and 38 when she had Ava. Wow. Um, <clears throat> okay. So of course we're excited. We're getting a baby sister. We're damn near out the house. So we don't got to deal with her that much. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, then at 20 weeks, my mom goes for her anatomy, anatomy scan, which if you don't know, 20 weeks is halfway through your pregnancy and the anatomy scan is when they do a lot of measurements on the babies, like the length of their arms, the, the measurements of their head, all their body parts, their organs, like you can see their organs on ultrasound. And <clears throat> they do all this to make sure the baby's like not underdeveloped in any way. Um, you also do blood work to make sure they have like the right chromosomes and um, they don't have any deformities like that they can tell from their, from their, from your blood draw. Um, and they find out during this anatomy scan that Ava has a heart condition and it's called HLHS, HLHS. I was looking <laughs> at your shirt. Oh, I forgot I had the shirt on today. Mm. Um, and that stands for hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And basically what that means is her left side of her heart is underdeveloped and it is not flowing through the right chambers, doing the right thing. Um, but that she is still growing in her belly and will probably continue to grow and they tell my mom like when they have to break this news to her on the day of her anatomy scan they're like here's your options and they offered for her to terminate her pregnancy at 20 weeks they offered that she could continue her pregnancy birth her baby and decide not to take any extensive measures to try to save her and to just have whatever time she has with her, whether that be days, weeks, months, whatever, and that they would assess her situation once she was born. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and then the third option was to have her and help her fight for her life, basically. And with HLHS baby, HLHS babies, <laughs> with HLHS babies, there is a pretty set in stone procedure of like, doing three corrective surgeries within the first couple few years of their life. And they told my parents, like, you can do these surgeries. There's three of them. There may need to be more depending on if there's complications and these corrective surgeries will not last forever. So she will end up needing a heart transplant. So we knew from the very beginning that she would need a heart transplant at some point. So you, your mom knew that at 20 weeks pregnant, mm -hmm. that her daughter, her little baby girl mm -hmm. was eventually going to need a heart. Yep. God, I can't imagine all the thoughts she must have had. I know. And like carrying her for 20 more weeks, knowing that she might not have more than a couple of days with her, depending yeah. on how, how, how badly she was yeah. when she, when they assessed out. her outside of the womb. Right. My God. So, um, pause real quick. I need to pick my nails or something. I need to, sorry, don't look in there. <laughs> there wasn't nothing crazy. I was going to say, I didn't see anything. So, <laughs> um, my eyes. I put that stuff away because cash goes in that drawer. Oh. Um, okay. So, of course, my mom, she's like, I mean, of course, they thought on this for a while. Like, this is terrible news. Yeah. But let's talk about the fact that, and at least this is my mom's story. I don't know if this is like 100% the truth or not, but she says the way that they got pregnant was that she's been taking birth control religiously for 16 years. My mom is very much a ritualistic person, so I believe her when she says she took a birth control on time. And she was the 0.03% chance you can get pregnant while taking a birth control pill. What the fuck? At 37 years old. 
Now, recently I've been thinking about that story and wondering if that's just what she told people or if that really was true. And I guess I'll never know the truth unless like she fesses up or convinces me otherwise. And I'm not saying I don't believe her, but there's a possibility that's just what she was telling people. Um, you think she would, well, I don't want to accuse your mom of anything. I don't know. I, I don't know. So where was I? Of course, my mom decides to have this baby because to her, it's a, mil- a miracle baby. She shouldn't have been able to get pregnant on. Right. Pill. Right. How, who would she be to, to waste this opportunity to have a child? You know? So of course, at this time they find out it's a girl. They decide pretty early on to name her Ava Hope. And Ava is born in September of 27 or 2013. And when she's born, she's seemingly fine. Wait, how is your mom? Sorry, go ahead. How is your mom's delivery? Like, was that pretty normal? Yeah, it was pretty normal. Um, she, she had this issue with me or Kendra before where like one side of her epidural didn't work. And that happened to her again with Ava. So while she was laboring and like contracting, she yeah. could feel it on half of her body. Uh, like on her left be a side. Weird or feeling. Yeah. And I remember being in the room with her and her just wailing in pain because she could feel all of it. And then that was pretty close to time to like start pushing. But when they when it was time to start pushing, they took her to the OR because they wanted to be prepared for Ava to code or yeah. then need to do some kind of like immediate yeah response and also my mom was high risk high risk pregnancy not only because of ava's condition but because she was a smoker she was 37 and she had high blood pressure so it was like she was already high risk pregnancy so ava's born september 2013 and we she was seemingly normal she went to the nicu but she's at like looking at her you couldn't tell that she had a heart defect she looked mm-hmm. like a normal baby and i want to say she was two or three days old days old when she had her first surgery her how first, many two or three two or three days old her wow. first open heart surgery oh my god and that first surgery is called the norwoods procedure norwood procedure and it went well i don't remember i don't recall for myself being any complications but of course it was complicated because she's a newborn baby like she doesn't even learn to eat yet yeah and i specific specifically remember after her surgery them not wanting to breastfeed her because since she had surgery they couldn't like guarantee that she wouldn't aspirate on milk Mm -hmm. and my mom was like fuck you i'm gonna breastfeed my daughter and because a baby doesn't understand iv nutrition they still feel hungry Mm -hmm. and so my mom at some point went against the doctor's wishes and started breastfeeding her and she started doing it like a champ like she's been doing it all her life. Who Ava? Ava. And my mom actually had a really good breastfeeding journey, which not everyone is pri- privileged to do. But um, question: yes. At the three days when Ava had her first open heart surgery, was your mom still in the hospital? Like, had she been discharged yet? She was probably she not. Vaginal, she had a vaginal delivery, oh, so, so yeah, she, she would have been discharged was. by then. Yeah. So but she had to bring her, or no, Ava was, stayed. Yeah, Ava stayed at the at the hospital in the NICU, and then while she was having surgery, my parents were allowed to stay at the hospital. Okay. They had parent rooms for them to stay in, and then they could go in the NICU as much as they wanted. Um. And at some point, we were able to hold her. I think the same day, but it was like much later in the day we were able to hold her. But it was like in NICU, like in a chair next to the bed. Yeah. Um, and then. That surgery went seemingly well. I don't remember any complications, but I was going through a really tough time in my life during that period. And so I don't remember a whole lot of it. So after six weeks, they took her home and she seemed six like, weeks. Six weeks. She was in the hospital for six weeks? Six weeks. Wow. She was six weeks old. After just home. the first surgery. surgery. Yep. And when she came home, she seemed like a normal baby. Like they were raising her as if she was a normal baby. And like, yeah, she had like medications and stuff she had to take. But otherwise, she just seemed like a normal baby. You wouldn't be able to tell by looking at her. Yeah. Um, and then at 
five months old, I believe, she had her second open heart surgery. So three days and then five months, just like a really short period of time. Um, she had her second one that was called the Glenn procedure. And that was the easiest of all three surgeries that she's had. Well, of all three corrective surgeries. Um, she was only in the hospital for like eight days after that surgery and was discharged, like no complications immediately extubated, was able to breathe on her own, everything. Like mm -hmm. it was great. Then when she was, this was really hard because from the time she was five months to the time she was five years or six years old, maybe I might be having that timeline wrong. Um, she was seemingly a normal child. Like she didn't need, I mean, she needed doctor's appointments and certain medications, but she never had a medical emergency. She never like had to go to the hospital for anything else during that time, other than maybe a cold or something that they had to watch really closely. But she seemed like a normal kid. And then when she was five years old, she had to go back for surgery for her third surgery. When did she, when did your parents like tell her that, like, did she know at five years old that she was going to be getting open heart surgery? Like, I think so. What did she know? I think they did explain it to her, but like in, in a kid appropriate yeah. way. Like they, they call her scar on her chest, her zipper. And there's a book about like. Is it the same place they cut every time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And there's scar tissue there and stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly how they told, I, I don't even know for sure how they told her, but I know that she was aware when she was five that she was going to have surgery, she was go to the hospital and see doctors and nurses. And Oh my God. Yeah. So during the Fontan procedure, there were complications during, during surgery. I don't think that we knew about at the time, but when she came out of surgery, you know, she was intubated when they tried to extubate her, which is to take the breathing tube out to, for her to breathe on her own. She was awake at this time, obviously. Um, they tried to extubate her five times and every single time had to re-intubate her. I remember this. Because she would struggle to breathe on her own while she was extubated. And we found out later that it was because there are two sides of your diaphragm. And normally only one side is working at a time and neither of the sides of her, like her whole diaphragm wasn't working and they didn't, they couldn't figure out why. So they had to do these fluoroscopes to try to figure out why, like they think it was a complication in her Fontan surgery that caused her diaphragm to stop working. And they'd like never seen what? this before. Yeah. So her diaphragm was working perfectly fine before the surgery. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's so, crazy. I remember the day that my parents told us that Ava might need to have a trach, uh -huh. which if you don't know what that is for the listeners, it's where they, they cut a hole in your throat and they put a breathing tube directly in your throat for long-term solution because you can't go, you can't really go home on a breathing tube down your throat, like through your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's not a very good long-term solution. And if it were in her throat, then she had the possibility of not having to be on a ventilator if she could breathe without it without a ventilator or you know being able to eat and talk still <clears throat> so eventually what ended up happening was um after a very long hospital stay i want to say it was about a year long she left with a trach and a g-tube and a g-tube is like on your belly and it's goes directly to your stomach i believe and so they would like administer medications that way they were administering her nutrition that way, like a feed, because they didn't know if she was going to be able to eat orally after that. And, um, yeah, so she went home on the trach. She, she was on a, um, what they call like CPAP for a while that was like forced air into her trach. And then eventually she didn't need forced air anymore. She was able to just breathe on her own through the trach, but then her voice wasn't very, working very well. Um, she did start eating again. She had to do a couple of swallow studies to make sure she wasn't going to aspirate or choke on her food. And then she tried to live a, a pretty normal life with a trach as much as she could. And after a, f a few years, a, they did a fluoroscope to check on her diaphragm and it was working again. 
and they're like, okay, we're going to try to see if we can decannulate her, which is taking her trade out, trade count. And when they tried, they did it in the OR, I believe. And they just, they realized that, um, her airway was too narrow, that it had shrunk and that without her airway airway being dilated she would need to still have the tray so how did it shrink i don't know not using it as much i guess i don't know but didn't they foresee that i don't know i don't know all these details like that i wish i did wow i'm sure my mom could tell you if she was here cut this out kels okay I'm feeling the high. Like, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> you look like you shouldn't have laid down. I'm battling it so hard. So you sit up. So you no, can... I can't. It's because we're in a boring part of the No, episode. it's not boring. I'm listening. It's very interesting. That's why I'm asking questions. Yeah. But I just. Well, we still got a lot, what, long way to go. So... I know. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Let me try to finish up the story as quickly as I can. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. <sighs> okay. So... They figure out her diaphragm is working. They decide to do a series of procedures where they will slowly try to dilate her airway using like a balloon catheter situation. Oh, she yeah, has to go under for, they weren't really working at first. And then I don't remember what happened to where they ended up working after all. And she, they call it, they, she ditched the trach. So she doesn't have the trach anymore. So how long did she have it in for? Oh, I don't know. A couple years. Years? Mm -hmm. I want to say at least two years. I might be wrong. Wow. I'm really bad with timing. It's been 10 years that this girl's been going through all this stuff. My mom could tell you. My mom's a date person. Yeah. She could tell you exact dates. But I can't. I don't. I don't. Poor It's the ADHD. I can't wait till she's older and we can ask her about, yeah. like, what was going through her head. Yeah, that's true. Especially this last stint. Yeah. So, last, the beginning of last year, like in January, maybe, maybe a little bit before the end of uh 2021 i think yeah the end of 2021 ava would have had a cardiology appointment where they did an echo where they were just checking on her heart function and they figure out that her heart function is starting to deteriorate and so this is something that my parents knew was going to happen they just didn't know if it was going to happen when she was young or when she was older but definitely a factor was probably all the complications she had from her last surgery took a big impact on her body and her heart and everything. So the cardiologist says, you know, we're approaching like transplant time. So we are going to start um, giving her medications to help with her heart function. And until we get to the point that she needs to go and be listed on transplant list. So then in February, Maybe it was April. It was April. April 2022. Cash was only three months old. Ava went into the hospital to start getting IV medication that would help her heart. And she had to be on that medication all the time, which is why she had to stay at the hospital. It's called Milrinone. And while she's on that medication, they put her on the transplant list maybe a week or two after she got... Um, admitted to the hospital. Ava spent 18 months waiting for a match. Wow. 555 days exactly. Wow. Waiting for a match for a heart. And the complications were that her antibodies were too high. And I guess basically every time you have surgery, your antibodies shoot up or any procedure, your antibodies shoot up to like protect your body. And if your antibodies are too high, you have a low possibility of matching with donors. So if her antibodies were at 97%, she could only match with 3% of donors that she qualified to match with. And it was like that for a while, like 97, 98% antibodies. Well, um, a week before October 27th, so October 20th, around that time, Ava got a bad cold, like a, like a common cold, like you and I would just go to work through or whatever. And it put her in the ICU because she couldn't breathe. She had fluid on her lungs and stuff. Why? And that dropped her antibodies. <gasps> That's what did it? It dropped her antibodies to 87%, I think, which would have given her a 13% 
you know, capability Match of rate. matching. Yeah. And on October 27th, Friday, October 27th, my mom messaged in the group chat, which is a group chat between like our family and a couple of other like extended family members, people who want to be updated on what's going on with Ava, like in real time. Yeah. And she messaged in the group chat and she said, guys, they're looking at a heart. I was at work. Okay. I don't think I've told you the story. You have not. I was at work. I, I was in the data entry room and we are going to be right back. <laughs> uh, cliffhanger. Hey guys, did you know? That we have merch. Merch. And if you're looking on YouTube, Angelica's wearing it. <laughs> um, if you want to buy merch, go to our Instagram. Our um, link tree is in our bio. Pull it up buy one for your girlfriend. Buy one for your boyfriend, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, your grandma, your grandpa. Yes. Our they, body. They are unisexual. So <laughs> Unisexual. <laughs> Okay, unisexual. Um, if you don't have access to our uh, link tree, you can just go to bonfire.com slash here dash we dash grow dash podcast. You have shirts. Yes. We have crew necks. Pullover hoodie, mm -hmm. crew neck. We could add some more stuff later if we want to, but it is, it is good. Please go get some. Please. Do it so that people say, what's on your shirt? And then you can say, oh, it's a podcast I listen to. You should listen to. And speaking of which, if you're listening to the podcast right now, which is how you're hearing my voice, send our podcast to someone you think will like it. Okay. I see the text come through and I'm like, holy shit. My brain just cannot compute. I'm like staring at my phone blank faced. And I'm upstairs at work in our data entry room, which is very quiet. We're just, it's like a library. And my mom's friend, Katie, who's also in this group chat, is downstairs in the filling room. She works at my job, which some listeners may not know. You know that. <laughs> I know that. And I hear her at the bottom of the stairs go, Kelsey. And I go, I know. I, I, I say that like down the stairs to her. And she just stampedes up the stairs as quick as she can. And I get up to meet her at the door at data entry. And we just <laughs> embrace each other really hard. Aww. And we just cry. We just both oh. let it out. And everybody is like, what is going on? <laughs> we're like, who died? And we're like, they're looking at a heart for Ava. And they're like, oh my God. Of course, my whole job knows who Ava is. And yeah. The whole thing. Um, actually, our pharmacist, Aaron, he has one of the newer batch of Ava shirts. Um. So that was really interesting. And they were like, how, like, how soon are you going to know for sure? Because they have to check to make sure like the way that the donor is passing away, like is not in such a traumatic way that they don't want to take this heart or that the heart does have good function on its own. Like you know, people have heart disease and shit like that. Like kids have heart disease. Question. Mm -hmm. This heart had to be from someone around her age group, correct? Mm -hmm. At least her weight group, which would be close to her age group. Okay. Um, so I thought about that. I was like, man, like. It's very sad that this came from someone's tragedy. Yeah. How sad, but also how amazing that, mm -hmm. like, that yeah. we're able to do these procedures and save right. lives. Right. Yeah. It's insane. It's so, like, so many different moving parts and emotions and yeah and like double-ended sword yes yes bittersweet yeah um so my mom's like yeah we'll know in like a couple hours and i knew that when she said that because she told us before like once we know they're looking at a heart they'll know within like an hour or two because the, the donor's waiting to know if yeah we want the heart i mean yeah, you know is wanting to know if we want the heart now another question and this not necessarily a part of the surgery but like is ava able to know who it came from so, UNOS plays a third party, like the transplant coordinator. Yeah. They, they play a third party to where if you ever want to reach out to the donor family, you can reach out through UNOS and then UNOS will say, do you want to be contacted by yeah. the family? And you can change that preference at any time. Wow. Um, but if the donor family doesn't want to meet us or know who we are or have any contact with us, like some, 
some families like will just write a letter like it doesn't have to be like face to face yeah but some families want to be like fully in like want to know who the person is and meet them and like some people like become friends with the family that donated yeah um and i asked my mom i was like you know if the donor family wants to know who you are would you oblige and she's like yeah but it's totally up to them yeah She's like, I totally would want to meet them and know them and thank them and, you know, all these things. Be a part of their healing if, yeah. if that's what they needed. So um, we're like, okay, we've just got to wait a couple hours to know for sure. And we're just like on I remember your on mom, of our seat. Yeah, your mom posted about it on Facebook. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, wait, what? She said, well, first, when she first knew that they were looking at a heart, she said, looking for prayers, good juju, can't yeah. say yet why. Yeah. I but I think like, you told us in the group chat. Yeah, I told you guys. And I was like, oh. yeah. And I remember your mom's, uh, yeah, post. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. So, yeah, this was the five, 555th day. Um, we actually didn't find out until like five hours later. It took so long. And they're like, yeah, we're taking the heart. And I mean, that was another like emotional, you know, roller coaster. And um, I was like, I fucking can't believe it. I've got to tell as many people as I can. Like, who do I tell? You know? And so I was just telling everybody. And um, so bittersweet. So that was October 27th. She had her heart transplant on Saturday, October 28th. And she is hopefully going to be going home on Monday the 13th. Yay. Yeah. Surprisingly, people who have transplants, even heart transplants, they turn around very quickly after their surgery because they now have a healthy organ. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as they're not rejecting the organ, they turn around very quickly and very quickly don't need assistance with anything like breathing, IV treatments, nothing. Physical therapy, yada, yada. So hopefully, I think she's going to end up coming home Friday, but they have a tentative release date of Monday. I mean, she looks amazing. Like in those pictures. So she might be home by the time y'all hear this episode. Yeah. yeah. She definitely will be if yeah. she comes home on Monday. Yeah. Or Friday. Well, it's tentative of like anything oh. else that comes up. But she looks great. My mom, the pictures my mom yeah. posted today. She looks really good. Yeah. Do you think I missed anything in the story? Um. I mean. Oh, I have. I have. I just remembered part. I was at the hospital pretty much the whole day that when she had surgery i did i did miss her i didn't get to see her before her surgery because i fucking set an alarm and then i couldn't sleep the night before so then i was on my phone and i ended up sleeping on top of my phone i couldn't hear my alarm so i missed the opportunity to get there in time to see her before she got taken back to surgery but i stayed up there until like 5 30 that day and she went to surgery at 7 a.m and um the coolest part about that day was that my mom requested that when the heart was to arrive at the hospital on the ambulance for them to notify my mom so that we could go watch the ambulance come in and we did and that that shit was crazy i, I just realized my mom didn't post that no she did she didn't post the video did she i don't know if there's a video but there was pictures okay there's a video because we saw them come into ambulance bay so here's the thing there was two heart surgeon surgeons there were two heart surgeons on Ava's surgery. One of them was Dr. Rodefeld, who's done all of her other surgeries. And the other one's Dr. Turrentine, who is another heart surgeon. Surgeon. Why are you saying surgeon? Surgery. Another heart surgeon um, with Riley. And Dr. Turrentine went to go get the heart, which was in Pennsylvania. And... Dr. Rodefeld stayed and prepped Ava and started her surgery while he went to go get the heart. It was like all this timing, moving parts and everything. She was in surgery for 12 hours. Oh my God. Um, and he pulled up with the heart and my mom and my grandma like snuck up on him like at the end of the ambulance and watched him get out and watched them pull the cooler out with her heart in it. Fucking insane. And my mom just fell to pieces when she saw the cooler and like oh. saw them going in with the heart. Like that's, that's my daughter's heart. Yeah. It's so insane. So surreal. So surreal. So, yeah. Was there another question you were going to ask before we wrap that up? Uh, I don't think it was a really question. I was just going to say, like, I can't imagine everything your parents have gone through. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, on top of Ava, I mean, Ava is the one who's been obviously impacted the most, but I mean, your parents too, like. Yeah. They were basically living at the hospital for 18 months. That's crazy. And for a stint before that, when the trach situation was Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Like. It's a lot of like medical stuff. Okay. So now that she has a new heart, like that's it, right? Like she should carry out a normal healthy life she may need another heart transplant when she's older what mm -hmm. when they get a heart transplant this young that heart usually does not grow with them all the way until they're 70 years old okay stop what mm -hmm. what do you mean it doesn't grow with them organ transplant recipients of any organ usually their expectancy for that organ is like 10 to 20 years what mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know the science behind it. But she, what? She could need another heart transplant in her lifetime. Yeah. In 10 to 20 years? Probably more like 20. Yeah. Wow. I don't know that number for sure, so don't quote me on that. But and then one, another one at 60? Like, oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Or she could have complications of other organs. Yeah. But anyway. All right. Let's get on Friends Trivia before you fall asleep on me. For, if you didn't know, Matthew Perry passed away. Rest in peace. R.I.P. He actually passed away the same day that Ava got a heart transplant, which is oh, very interesting. Big rip. Um, which is kind of, kind of why we combined this episode this way. Um, but yeah, we're going to do some Friends Trivia in tribute to him. He did say, I read the article, I, I know you've seen it too because you posted it, that he didn't want to be remembered just for being on Friends. And that's true. Like, he was in other movies, and one movie that really sticks out to me is a movie called The Ron Clark Story. Have you ever seen that? No. You would love that movie. I've only ever seen Friends with him in it. I haven't seen any other movie or anything with He's him also in, in one of the Oceans movies, maybe Oceans 11, um, and like a couple other movies. Um, but... The movie that sticks out to me is The Ron Clark Story, which is kind of like Poetic Justice or um, Freedom Riders, like that kind of movie where it's like a teacher making differences in a student's lives. Yeah. And he plays a true story of a teacher named Ron Clark that worked at an inner city school of like minorities and like it was like grade school. It wasn't or maybe middle school. It wasn't like high school, like how Freedom Riders is. Mm -hmm. But anyway, rest in peace. Are you talking about his dad? Yeah, so I, I haven't really been following it. I tried to look it up before we started, and I got distracted. But he, if you don't know, he passed away at his house, and they, he was found in his hot tub. They thought he drowned, but that was the it was an apparent drowning, meaning when you first find him floating in a hot tub, it looks like he drowned. Mm -hmm. um, but they're doing an autopsy and i don't think those results have come back yet of course they're gonna have to do toxicology to see if there's something in his system that made him like unconscious well or... i read that there was a medication he was taking that specifically said like you can not oh, go into hot temperature hot water, hot water yeah. yeah maybe that's fucking nuts that is nuts Ox also Ox ozempic no no no. Oh. it's something else but he talked about it I, I saw that he talked about it in his book when he got put on that medication. Oh, soaking in hot water can make people drowsy or faint. I didn't know that. So if he had a medication that already made him drowsy or faint, then being in a hot tub would have been fatal. Oh. Anywho, um, let's get into some friends trivia, shall we? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you my questions first, and then we can do the website questions because I think my mine are pretty good. My questions first. My questions because I think they're pretty good. Mm, my questions first. Go ahead. Um, I got to find it. Oh. Okay, ready? <laughs> can you name. All six actors. Okay, first of all, let me just start off with Kelsey watches Friends on repeat over and over. Not that recently. 
Okay, but s- still though. Yeah. Like enough. I've watched it more than you. I've watched it one time. Yeah. One time. Yeah. And but you took- do have you have no more knowledge than I think you do. Or oh. than you think you do. Maybe. And they took it off Netflix. Yeah. Dumb that's idiots. Ma- but you have Max too. I know, but I'm watching other shows now. <laughs> I'm also not very good at re-watching stuff. Like, yeah. I like to just one and done, like, yeah. okay, done that. I'm that way with other shows, but Friends is my comfort show. I will say that, too. Like, I, Maria does that, too, where she'll put Friends on, and yeah. I'll just sit there and, and watch it. Yeah, I just put it on the background, usually. Like, or yeah. if I'm about to fall asleep, but I need something playing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Name all six characters. All six actors' names. No! You should know them. Courtney Cox, uh-huh. Jennifer Aniston. Ah, uh-huh. oh, fuck. Can we give you a hint? Yes. You think thinking about Phoebe? Yeah, Phoebe. Uh, starts with the, her first name starts with an L. Lisa Kudrow. Yep, Lisa Kudrow. Um, Matthew Perry. Mm-hmm. Uh, something swimmer. Jerry swimmer. No. No. <laughs> What's his first name? David. David. And it's Schwimmer. Schwimmer. David Schwimmer. David Schwimmer and Matt LeBlanc. Yep. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) Can't tell you any more of those. Okay. (laughs) That's it. That's all the actors I know. Okay. All right. Finish the sentence. How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me blank? Do you want me to set the scene? Yes. Okay. Monica... Monica, Monica, Phoebe, and Rachel start reading this book that they're hearing all this rave about, and it's about a woman learning their value and their their esteem, their self esteem. Yeah, and it's all about like being the wind up beneath your wings and all these like colloquialism. And Ross comes in; they're they're like all hype on it and like hyping each other up. And Ross comes in and he's like, "Oh, come on, sweetie, we've got a movie to get to or whatever." And she's like, don't tell me what to do. And, you know. Rachel says that? Yes. Okay. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, he's confused. He's just trying to go to the movies. Yeah. And she goes, "Um, how do you expect me to grow if you won't let me blink? (laughs) You don't know it? You're nodding your head, but I don't know. I feel like you thought you knew and you thought it was inappropriate. How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me Remember the book is about wind, them being the wind in their lives. Did we just tell you? If you want me fly, no, that's funny. Give me a hint. I don't know any other okay. besides wind. Wind. How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me? Okay, let me tell you what Ross says after she says it. Okay, sweetie, you know I don't mind if you do that. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that changes everything. Yeah. How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me? <laughs> <laughs> if you won't let me, so no. <laughs> Starts with a B. Blow. Yeah. <laughs> How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me blow? Because she's the wind in her life. She needs to blow. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, sweetie, you know, I don't really care if you want to do that. You know, like something like that. Yeah. All right. Who was Ross dating when he found out Rachel was pregnant? <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that super smart girl. The, 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 the Asian girl, no. right? No. No. That's um, Julie. Julie! That was very early on. That was when oh. Rachel first found out that Ross was in love with her. Okay, okay, okay. This is in like season was... nine when Ross finds out that Rachel's pregnant. And he's dating He's someone? dating someone that he met at, at Chandler and Monica's wedding. <laughs> Did she have curly hair? No, she has short hair. What? Mm-hmm. Does he go on to marry this girl? No. Okay. But he dates her for a good part of Rachel's pregnancy. What? And she doesn't find out until later because he just forgets to tell her. That that he got another girl pregnant? Yes. Yes. And Red flag. Throughout the (laughs) entire... Yeah. (laughs) There's a lot of red flags in Friends. Throughout the entire time, every time he like runs to Rachel's rescue because something's going on with her pregnancy, 
he forgets that he's supposed to meet his girlfriend and he yells her name like, oh shit, I forgot. And what does he say? What's the name that he says? What does this start with? M. That's a four letter name. Mary? No. I don't think you're going to get it. No, no, no. <laughs> I have to explain all the answers to get you to the right I don't answer. remember. I watched yeah. it one time. It's still fun though, I guess. Mm, Macy? No. He no. Oh, okay. <laughs> he talks about at the wedding when he first knows her um, that her name is famously someone else's name. And she's like, oh, yeah, I get that a lot. It starts with an M? Uh-huh. Mm. I don't think you're going to get it without me telling you. Hang on. Okay. Mm. Do you remember when he comes to the hospital because she's having Braxton Hicks and he's got movie theater candy in his hand? I literally don't remember this. Okay. Well, then I don't think you're going to know that. Okay, then. what is it? Mona. Oh, yeah. I would never guess that. Yes. Mona? I don't remember Can this. show you a picture of her? Yeah. Mona. When he forgets about her, he goes, ah! Mona <laughs> just forgets that he was supposed to be meeting her. Mona Lisa. How that's does, what I was getting. Uh, how does she eventually find out about Rachel's pregnancy? Um, I don't remember that girl. Is she crazy? When, when Rachel tells her dad that she's pregnant, he gets really mad and finds out that it's Ross and he's never liked Ross. And he goes to Ross's apartment to yell at him about it. And Mona's there and they're on a date. Like, at his apartment. And the dad's like, you got my daughter pregnant. You're not even going to marry her. And he's, Mona's like, you got Rachel pregnant? And then the dad's like, who's this? Oh. And it's this really funny scene where he's like, no, no. Like, it's not like that. You know, I, I, I would have married her, but she didn't want to. And then oh, Mona's yeah. like, what? <laughs> it's like, no, not like that. I. I would have married her, but I'm not in love with her. And then the dad's like, you're not in love with my daughter, but yeah. you knocked her up. And he's like, I need to sit down. <laughs> it's really it's like, I remember bits and pieces when you talk about it, but I can't. You need to rewatch it, apparently. I do. Oh, this is, did you see this? Did I show you yeah. that? Okay. Did you see <laughs> did this? You, did I show you that? <laughs> okay. Um, what instrument did Ross want to play at Chandler and Monica's wedding? Oh my God, you're killing me songs. <laughs> is it a wind it instrument? Was, it was in the blooper reel. We watched half of it. It was in the beginning of the blooper reel I sent you. Was it the be- was it a is it a flute instrument? I'm flute. Is it an a air wind instrument? Oh, yes. an air instrument. <laughs> air, <Yeah>. fire, <laughs> water. Yeah, it's wind. Is it not a flute? It's not a normal instrument. <laughs> is it a clarinet? No, it's is a it really saxophone? annoying sounding instrument. Harmonica? No. I don't think you're going to get it if you don't know it. You're just guessing instruments now. Oh, my God. Okay, fine. Tell me. I Bag suck. Bagpipes. Yep. <laughs> you remember now? No. Okay. Does he eventually play them for someone? Yeah, he plays them on the show. There's a part where they're all sitting down and he's playing it and they're, like, trying to act like they don't hate it. And he goes, you know this song? Sing along. And he's selling. He's, <laughs> he's doing celebration. <laughs> celebrate good times. Come on. Oh, my song. God. And I have to watch this and again. I feel so shitty. Phoebe goes. She sits forward to sing along. And she's like, eh, eh. Like singing to the bagpipe, <laughs> not the words of the song. <laughs> and on the blooper reel, they just could not hold it together. Okay, we we got another one you can answer. Girl, I'm, I don't know any of these. I only watched it one time. Okay. There's uh, so many episodes. Why did Joey make Chandler live in a box? Do you remember that? No. Okay, we'll uh, skip that question then. Kelsey. Why are you blaming me for? I've only watched this one time. You agreed to this episode. I did because I thought I knew more. You, you had faith in me too. I did. Let's see if the Friends trivia questions are a little easier. Yeah, I bet they are. You probably chose some really hard ones. <laughs> I made them up myself. Exactly. You you select you like thought of really hard ones. Okay, what are Monica and Chandler's twins' names? <laughs> that was at the end. That was in the tenth season. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. At first, I don't know why I thought it was Phoebe's kid, but no, she has triplets for her brother. Yeah. And they <laughs> That's have why my twins. sister's pregnant. I'm the dad. <laughs> <laughs> Monica 
and Chandler have twins through their surrogate. Yes, through their surrogate, which is um something white, her last name, the actor's name. Yes. They named one of the kids after the character's name of the surrogate. Because it's a boy and a girl twin. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. It's Erica. Oh, yeah. And Jack, which is her dad's name. Monica's dad's name. Wait. Okay, so who's Erica named after? The surrogate? The surrogate, yeah. Okay, Erica and Remember, Jack. she's like, um, we're going to name the baby Erica. And Erica goes, oh, my God, that's my name. <laughs> And then they, later they tell Joey they're going to name her Erica, or they name the baby Erica, and Joey goes, oh my god, that's her name. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we know. That's why. Now there's going to be two of them. Aww. Um, they should have kept this show going. Yeah. What? Okay, this one you better know. What is Ross's son's name? <laughs> Zach or Cody? <laughs> Cole or Dylan? Cole or Dylan. No, I, I, okay, Ben. Yes. Ah! We finally got one on the, <laughs> well, second turn around. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, we need to take a break. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, let's see. What is Ross's first wife's name? The lesbian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, I just remembered it. Oh, fuck. So that's the C? Uh huh. Um, start of the C. What's the next letter? A. <laughs> Cara? No. Close. Clara, oh, Clara. Um, Ka- Candace. That's Carol. Carol. <laughs> Cara, Candace, Clark. Cl- what's what is it called? What's her name? Carol. Carol. <laughs> Even after you tell me, I don't remember. Joey played Dr. Drake Ramore on which <gasps> which fictional show? Oh fuck! We just talked about it earlier. Days of Our Lives. Yes, Days of Our Lives. But is that not is that not a true show? It is a real real show, real show, real show. Oh, which is why it's crazy that Jennifer Aniston's dad played Wait, on that show. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why they did Maybe that. They used that for that. Yeah. Maybe he, her dad played a doctor. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, what is Joey's signature pickup line? How you doing? How you doing? Could I be wearing any more clothes? Right. Um, this is this says Ross Geller trivia and it's none of Ross's questions. <laughs> Which song does Phoebe sing most often? A smelly cat. Yeah, I was about to start humming it. How does it go again? Smelly cat, smelly cat. cat. What are mm. they feeding you? <laughs> I almost said soft kitty. <laughs> That's big bang theory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What is the name of the woman who Ross was trying to marry when he said Rachel's name at the altar? And stuff? Oh, <laughs> I like. Can She's see. British. Yeah, I know. I know. I can see her, but I don't know her name. Not good with names, apparently. I'm terrible at names. What, what does it start with? E. Erica. <laughs> no, that's the surrogate. Evelyn. No. What's the next letter? I was trying to whisper it to you. Emma? Emily. Emma. Emma is Rachel and Ross's daughter's name. That's what it was. Dang, it's so weird. close. Yeah, kind of weird now that I think about it. I like that name, Emma. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. How many pages was the letter that Rachel wrote Ross? Ten. No. More or less? More. 21? No, less. 17. 18 pages. Oh, front yeah. And back. back. Were they on a break? <laughs> <sighs> I think so. Yeah. 
we were on a break. I think it's reasonable for Rachel to feel upset. Of course. But not to the point where you don't continue to try to give each other a chance. Like, she was like, she was, was acting his... like she be- he betrayed her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like wait, he did just, on her. Wait, did you just kiss somebody? No, he had sex. Oh. But, but he was under the impression that they were not together. Because she broke up with him the day before. Or the day of. Okay, so it was a breakup. But she said, we're done. It's over, we're yeah. done. Yeah, it's a breakup. Right. It's not even a break. That's a breakup. Yeah. That's tough, though. Yeah. I mean... It's it's not a black and white situation like how people sensationalize it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, Rachel had all rights to feel upset about what happened, but not so much so that Ross betrayed her. Like, it's yeah. not black and white like the way she made it seem in the show. Right. Right. Um... <gasps> Who was Rachel meant to marry at the beginning of season one? Barry! Yes. The dentist! <laughs> yeah, you actually knew that one. <laughs> And it's a name one that you, I didn't think you'd know because it was yeah. a name. Or here, you, do, you go through these. I forgot to hand it to you. Let's do a few more and then we got to stop because it's 1240. What is the name of Rachel's assistant at Bloomingdale's? Tag. That's the kid, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't she like try to have? Uh, she does. She has a relationship with him. Oh he's, my god! He's not like a kid, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an adult. What does Rachel give to Ross's monkey as a leaving present? I have no idea. It says teddy bear. Maybe I remember that a little bit, like a little teddy bear. Maybe. What's oh, that a- he used to hump on her bed. He used to hump it on. Her bed. <laughs> What song did Rachel sing at her ex's wedding? Oh, I remember this, but I don't know the name of the song. Right? Barry marries her best friend, right? Yeah. Mindy. Mindy. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Copacabana. Copacabana. Yep. Now I remember. How does that go? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a, it can, it's kind of like an islandy song like you would have. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cabana. Right. Cabana. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when you're in Maui or something. Um, from what stuffed toy did Rachel and Monica steal clothes to hide a bump on Ross's son's head? Um, uh, a bear. A Berenstein bear? Rainy day bear. Rainy day bear. Yeah, it was a rain, it was a rain outfit. Yeah. They put the rain hat on. I kind of remember that. Which supermodel played Joey's girlfriend, Janine? Oh, I don't know her name. That was like real life supermodel. Oh, Janine was a bitch. (laughs) Janine was a bitch. She was. (laughs) What is Rachel's middle name? Karen. My. What is Rachel's... Rachel's... You should have been just quizzing me this whole time. (laughs) What is Rachel's job in the later season of Friends? Um, She is a... Junior... like in purchasing yeah it's purchasing fashion buyer fashion buyer yeah fashion. i knew i knew it was purchasing or something Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um rachel had a sister what was her name rachel. 10 points if you guess her real name rachel's name well she had two sisters on the show oh shit she did one of them was why did this say rachel had a sister she has two sisters. Yeah, why? why one of them this... is Reese Witherspoon. Yep. And the other one is um, Christina Applegate. Mm-hmm. I don't know their characters' names. Wait, wait. What does it start with? A. Amy. Yep. That took me a minute, but I got it. Oh, wait. Who does Rachel have a brief romance with in the final season of Friends? Joey. I don't remember that. They were in the the Bahamas. 
they were in the Bahamas for a, a Ross was a keynote speaker and Ross was dating. Um, what was her name? Charlie. Wait, so Ross and Rachel don't end up together? No, no, Ross and Rachel do. They do, but it was just for a brief moment in that season. And then they realized they didn't like it. It didn't feel good. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And then Ross and Rachel end up together in the last episode. Oh God. Okay. What is Rachel's catchphrase? Rachel's? As it says. What is Rachel's catchphrase? This isn't right. It says I was on a break. That's not right. No. What food does Rachel mistakenly put beef in instead of trifle? The um, English trifle. Shepherd's pie. No, that's wrong too. It's a dessert that she puts beef in. She mistakes it for the shepherd's pie recipe. Yeah, I thought it. Well, you just said it. Shepherd's pie. But that's not the answer. Oh. She was trying to make an English trifle. But she mixed up the recipe between the English trifle and the shepherd's pie. So you're saying, say the, say the question again. <laughs> what food does Rachel mistakenly put beef in instead of a trifle? She puts beef in an English trifle. Okay, moving on. <laughs> what is Rachel? I'm right. <laughs> All right. What is Rachel's biggest fear? Isn't that something funny? I guess. Did you look at the answer? Yeah. It's something. I don't know. Tell me. Swings? Oh, yes. When Ross starts talking about taking Emma to the park, she's like, why would you do that? Oh, yeah. And he's like, what? Like, kids are at the park? She's like, I have, a, like, trauma from my hair getting caught in the swing. And then finally they go do it. That part. That part's really funny when they're at the swing. But go ahead. Wait, they don't have a Chandler one? Oh, there it is. We should be doing Chandler. Yeah, you're right. All right, what is Chandler's full name? Chandler Muriel Bing. <laughs> yeah, Muriel. <laughs> Muriel. <laughs> what is Chandler's job in the later seasons? Transmonster. No. Um, I know they've like written it out, but nobody knows. Nobody knows what he really does. Yeah, no one really knows, but it says junior advertising copywriter. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot he does get into advertising toward the end because he's an intern for a while. Advertising copywriter? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. How many categories of towel does Chandler have? It's Monica and it's seven. <laughs> okay. So it's 11. Seven? 11. Oh, maybe it is 11. Yeah, you're right. It's 11. But it's Monica's? It's Monica. That oh. was in the trivia game that they played for the apartment. Ross did a trivia game. And uh, Monica and Rachel and Chandler and Joey were betting the apartment to switch apartments. It was in the trivia game. What is Chandler's signature catchphrase? Is it right? Could I be any more sarcastic? Oh, yeah. Could I be any more anything? Yeah, that's what I was, gonna th yeah. That was, that's what I was thinking. What is Chandler's biggest fear? Biggest fear. Oh, I like that. Um, is it stupid? No. It's, it's between him and Monica. I have no idea. Commitment. Commitment. As soon as you were about to say it, I knew it. <laughs> Chandler dated a woman with an, what unusual look? Big nose. Big head or pointy nose or something like Unusually that. Unusually large head. Yeah. I remember that conversation because they were talking about why he can't keep girls and they're like, you're too picky. Like you just nitpick them. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. He always finds something wrong with them. Right. Yeah. What did Chandler mistype Rachel's name on? What did Chandler mistype Rachel's name as on Ross's pros and cons list? Rachel. What the fuck? Yeah. How do you remember that? This is after they got back together about the eight, after the 18 pages front and back. And he was like, should I get back with her? Or should I stay with Julie? Oh, yeah. And she reads it. And she's like, who's Rachel? Or yeah. even reads the pros and cons. List. Yeah. Yeah. And then he plays a song on the radio for her. And then she oh. calls into the radio and says, this is what he did. And the radio host is like. We just got a call from Rachel <laughs> and Ross. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is Chandler's favorite holiday? 
Um, not Thanksgiving. It's his it is Thanksgiving. It's his worst one. Monica makes some mac and cheese and hot dogs. Wow, this is terrible. Yeah. Some of them are good, though. Let's do... Um, let's do a couple of Joey's. I did Joey's. I didn't do Monica's. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah, let's do Mo that's what I'm missing. Yeah. Monica. Monica. Um or Phoebe. Or we did we do Phoebe. I read somewhere that um Matthew Perry was in a movie. I think it was Oceans with um Bruce Willis, which is um Elizabeth's dad in the show in Friends. Do you remember Bruce Willis being in there? Who's Elizabeth? Elizabeth is the student that Ross starts to date. <gasps> and his dad, her dad finds out and he's mad about it. Uh huh. And anyway, so Chandler, or Matthew Perry's in a movie with Bruce Willis and he makes a bet and Bruce Willis loses the bet. And the, the cost of losing the bet is that he has to come and do an episode of Friends for free. And he ends up being on like three or four episodes of Friends. I think three. So, that was a fun fact. Um, what is Monica's catchphrase? I know. Yeah. I know. Me and Katie actually quoted that today. What is Monica's biggest fear? I don't know. Chaos and disorder. Oh, yeah. That's true. Says which friend's apartment did Monica take over as her own? Joey and Chandler. It says Rachel's apartment. That's wrong. Yeah, because Rachel came in to live with her. Right. After Phoebe moved out. Yeah. I wonder if these questions were written by AI and that's why they're mixed up a little. Maybe. Interesting. All right, any more? Do two more. How many nipples does Chandler have? Three. Or want two in a nip, uh, what do they call it? A nub? A nub? Yeah. How old was Phoebe when her mother committed suicide? 18. It says 13. Oh, I thought it was like 17 or 18. Joey has an uncle with a really big tongue. What is his name? <laughs> no idea. I saw that question. I don't know the answer to it. It says Sal. Uncle Sal. I kind of remember that. Joey's imaginary childhood friend was a what? Ghost? I don't know. Space cowboy. Oh, I don't know that story. Must have been early on. Ooh, a spinoff based on which character was Joey. canceled? Okay. <laughs> it was Joey. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting about like to continue his story or something else. Yeah, to continue his story. Why just his? Because Mom, Ross and Rachel were coupled up. Mom oh. and Chandler were coupled up. And Phoebe and Mike were coupled up. Yeah. I don't think it would ever work. No. They tried. That's so weird. I never knew about it. I was a teenager though. <sighs> All right, guys. It's been a long night. It, the time is currently 12.52 a.m. Jesus. <laughs> we took a long time to get started tonight, so we're getting tired. Yes. But we're gonna go quite, means. quite the episode. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, comment. Yep. Buy our merch. Yep. Play. Please. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.